See the Domain Chandon Experience, a gift pack and spending money thanks to L'Oreal. All you need to do is keep watching, enjoy our fashion features each day. There will be three. You simply select the outfit you like, call the number on the screen, it's 1902 555 961. Tell us which outfit you select and why. The winners will be announced at the end of each day here on Channel 10, so daily prizes for a fabulous, fantastic fashion competition. Let's cross now to Lynn Talbot on the lawns with some special Derby Day guests. Well, I have got some special guests. In fact, Sandra, everyone has been commenting on just how gorgeous you look. And I just happen to have the creator of your outfit here with me now, Katie Davenport. Hello, Katie, to you. Hi there. And also Brian Keane, the Chief Executive Officer of Amy. Of course, a huge day for you, being the major sponsor of the Victoria Derby. It certainly is. It's a huge day uh, for, for Melbourne generally, but it's a big day. Yes, and not only do you sponsor the major race today, you also sponsor Spring Fashion Week. Uh, the link between horse racing and fashion just seems to grow, doesn't it? It's getting bigger and bigger. And, of course, it's not just a race meeting, I don't think. It's, a, it's just a, a marvellous carnival for everyone, and fashion plays an enormously important part in that. Well, that's right, and I'm, it, I'm told it's uh, estimated to be worth about $19.4 million to our local designers. Isn't that terrific? It is fantastic. I think, I mean, it is impossible to be in fashion in Melbourne and not be a part of the Melbourne Cup Carnival. Yeah, well, that's right. Now, let's take a look at some of the fantastic fashions we saw during Spring Fashion Week. And, uh, you know, the beautiful trends that we saw there. What about here? Have they translated well? I think it's wonderful that colour is so much back in fashion. It's very exciting. And I think we're going to see amazing fashion here today. Yeah, look, it's very colourful, feminine, and uh, a lot of flowing fabric. So great to see. There's no more grunge, is there? <laughs> no, hopefully not. No, that's right. And, of course, uh, lucky viewers as Sandra was just saying, have the chance to play fashion critique from their armchairs at home. So that's great too. Three of the designers from the Ready to Wear fashion parades during the Spring Fashion Week were asked to design specific outfits just for today. You can make the choice. It's not an easy one and uh, there are some beautiful prizes to be won for that. And Sandra, look, uh, some tips perhaps. What about you, Brian? Well, look, I, I don't have that many friends. I can afford to lose any, but if I had to have a tip, I'd take the Queenslanders, numbers one and two. OK, and what about you for the derby? Uh, I think I'll go with Scalato. Well, there you go. Now, I've had tips from everyone today, so I'm just confused. I think I'll ignore the lot of them and uh, go for my own. Now, Sandra, who are you going for? Well, Lynn, I'm a Queenslander, so of course I've got to go for uh, Scalato. And I have some connections there, so I'm very excited, very nervous for them all. But fingers crossed Scalato does well this afternoon in the big one. Now, if you'd like to participate, you're at home and you can't join us for all the action, we do want to hear from you. We have an official Melbourne Cup email address for you. So make sure you're part of the, uh, of the day. Drop us a line and the email address is right there on your screen. It's called thecup at network10.com.au. You can see it there, the cup at network10.com.au and as I said, drop us a line. Well, we will be back with all the fun, fashion and glamour. This is Amy Victoria Derby Day. See you after the break. Welcome back. This is Derby Day. You know, every year on Derby Day, there's a horde of me media here at Flemington from Victoria, from all over Australia, and, and of course, I'm sure there are plenty from around the world. Uh, as a result, there is an enormous amount of colour stories and photographs that are taken each year. Amy Hall, the annual Media Awards, and we're now looking at a selection of the photographs that were nominated as part of last year's awards. As you can see, some fascinating photographs and some real character pieces. What you're looking at now is the winning entry from last year, taken by Pat Scala from Melbourne's Age newspaper. It's a portrait of the Derby runner Chief Scout. You can see it right there, right now, at Altona Beach, with the handler in the week leading up, of course, to the 1999 Derby. Well, the Amy Victoria Derby Media Awards will be conducted throughout the day, but we'll be giving you some insights into those fabulous photographs as the journalists and photographers capture the essence and the magical moments of what is a magical week. 
Well, a new addition here at Flemington, there's no chance you can miss it. Uh, 12 months in construction and at a, I think it holds about 9,000 people at a cost of $50,000. It will be, it's about to be, officially opened. Let's cross now to the man conducting all the formalities, Andrew Ramsden, chairman of the VRC. As promised one and a half years ago, the grandson has been completed on time and on budget for this year's Melbourne Cup Carnival. It is with great pride that we are here today, Amy Victoria Derby Day, to officially open our new grandstand. I wish to acknowledge Brian Beatty, our former Chief Executive, who had the vision to provide members of the Victoria Racing Club with facilities which I believe will become the envy of the racing world. We've already seen the impact this has had on the membership base of the club, where nearly 10,000 new members have joined the club in the last two years, of which 40% are under 40 years of age, ensuring a bright future for our club. Now my pleasure to call on Premier of Victoria, the Honourable Steve Rack, to officially open the grandstand. Well, well, thank you very much, first of all, to Andrew Ramsden, the VRC Chairman, to Dale Monteith, the VRC CEO, to the architects, and I think they deserve a special round of applause for this magnificent building that uh, is here, uh, Grant Beck and Ken Edelston. Um, congratulations. I wonder if we can put our hands together for what, what they've done. And the, the committee members, the grandstand subcommittee members, it is a pleasure to be here. Uh, it is a pleasure to be at Flemington, a, a course that has been in place for more than 150 years and of course um, with the derby here today expected to have big crowds and the whole spring racing carnival expected to be an outstanding success with increased crowds over last year and uh, of course if the weather holds up it's expected that some 80,000 interstate visitors will also, and international visitors will also be part of our spring racing carnival arrangements. And the growing success of the spring carnival of course uh, with record attendances and an economic impact of $238 million a year to the Victorian economy uh, goes down as the biggest event of all the events we have in Melbourne and Victoria and we pride ourselves on... Uh, well, come on, come on stream here. We pride ourselves on um, uh, conducting big events very well but this is the biggest of the big events and congratulations to the VRC, congratulations for an outstanding effort in adding on to the Victorian economy and the lifestyle and entertainment in Victoria. This, um, this grandstand, uh, headed up by the grandstand subcommittee, Rod Fitzroy, <laughs> is to be commended for adding on to the corporate and public facilities here in Melbourne. Not only it will be an outstanding addition for race goers and those wishing to have good facilities while they're attending the races, but also for 365 days a year we have a first class facility here in Melbourne which can be used to attract visitors to our state and to keep them here as well. And just think of what, what you have here and what you've developed. I think you've got outstanding value for money. The amount of money that's been applied here to think of the structure and the facilities you've got and the payback that we'll have um, in return on capital, I think it's outstanding to see the vista over to the City of Melbourne, to see the great facilities here, the 600 people that can be catered for in this building. Congratulations, I think you've done an outstanding job. I've therefore got uh, enormous pleasure in saying to the committee, well done, and in declaring open uh, what is called, rightly and properly, a very simple name, the Grandstand. Congratulations to all those involved. a very special moment here at Flemington with the official opening of the brand new grandstand. You can't miss it. It's pretty impressive. Well, we've still got plenty of racing in store, as you well know. Race 2 coming up after the break, so stay with us.
watching Network 10's live and exclusive coverage of Amy Victoria Derby Day. This is just one day of four fabulous days of racing. The crowds are starting to swell. Flemington is starting to build. You know, the weather a little overcast, but more importantly, it's dry. Top temperature today of about 18 degrees, so a pretty nice day, and we're expecting the crowds to really swell. Well, the racing is the most important feature of the day. Race two is just ahead. Let's go trackside to Peter and Jenny. Thank you very much, Sandra. And isn't it great to be down here in the mountain yard again? It feels, feels like we're at home, doesn't it? It feels <laughs> like we're at home, and we've just watched these horses in the mountain yard. Road to success number one, Nashra Willa, the rider for John Salonitri. Well, he's first up here today, Peter, after a bit of a spell. He's a blue diamond winner. He probably had enough when he went to Sydney, so with 59 kilos, I prefer to see him here. It does look pretty well, Road to Success. Number two is Kuta Mutu. Now, Darren Beedman takes the ride here for Jack Denham. Pretty good form in Sydney, not so good down here. No, well, carried 59 kilos last start at Caulfield in the Tupperware Cup and got 59 again here today. That's my concern. He has had three goes on the dead, um, so he, he's, he's probably a place chance. There's the one they're back. Your selection, Cossett, number four. Yes, I think his form's been terrific, Peter. He is a winner at Flemington on the heavy track before, and I think he's got a, a good each-way chance. The grey horse looks well, Cheffel, and he flew down the straight the other morning in a trial. He was most impressive. Yes, Ronnie Morn's brought this horse down from Queen. Queensland. His form has been very good and he's there with the chance. Number six is Chenna. The rider is Chris Munce and there it is. Robert Heathcote is the trainer at Eagle Farm. Quite nice odds too. This horse, uh, he had he had very good form during the Brisbane Carnival earlier this year and his uh, form has been quite impressive on the heavy track as well. So I give him a chance. Chance also to number seven, Gifted Ground which is in the betting. Damien Oliver, the rider for Nick Cox at Seymour. Yes, he probably found the thousand metres a bit short last start there at Mooney Valley. Um, this race probably suits a little bit better, but uh, I'd say a place chance in this time. The Hayes camp quietly confident about number eight, St Petersburg. Stephen Baster takes the ride. Well, if you can forgive him for his last start there in the Guineas prelude over the 1,400 metres and go on his run before that on the heavy track, he's probably there with a the chance. And number nine, Omaru Force, this horse that a lot of people are talking about, Brett Preble, the rider for David Hall. Well, he's just been outstanding at his two wins yep. so far to date. Um, let's see if he can go on with it. He's very, very talented. And you said before that he absolutely flies the gates and that might be important here and number 12 is Capias and the rider here is Peter Mertens for Bruce Elkington. Well Pete, this is an interesting horse. I've got a, a bit of an opinion of him. I thought he ran a terrific race last start behind Omaru Force. He's 65 to 1. Whether or not today is his day, I don't think so. I'd like to see him over 1400, but just watch him for sure. Well you've just seen the totes. Let's take you through all of them for the nine runners here in front of this big crowd at Flemington prior to the running of race two, the Shivers Regal Group 3 event. The 19th of the series, and we'll be able to see that Omaru Force has come up the favourite, number nine. So it is the one, and it is currently showing around about $2.50 on the tote. But the ones in the betting, Cosset, there's been a bit of support for that. We might check in with Tim Gossett shortly. Cheffel at $7.60 on Super Tab is also well and truly in contention. And now, Omaru Force, and the favourite, well they've jumped. Petersburg Here's Dan Maliki. Out wider on the track, so they're going to split up here. There's going to be four coming down the grandstand side, uh, including the favourite, which is Omaru Force. Keffel going out there, and so too Kapias and Kudamudu. Over on the flat side of the track, and it's Cossett who crosses down to the rails and leads by about a length and a half from St Petersburg. And joining in with them was uh, Chenna, and Road to Success is also up there, but only a couple of lengths off the lead with Gifted Ground, last of the five on the flat side. Down the grandstand rail, and it's Omaru Force just in front of the grey. Keffel, Kudamudu's in third spot and two lengths away, Kapias running onto the course proper, 500 to go the flat side and Cossett led clearly out by two lengths to St Petersburg Chenna ridden along and then road to success and gift of ground making up some ground, the grandstand side Omaru Force joined and headed by the grey Keffel, coming down to the 250 Cossett's in front, out wide was Keffel the grey, it's Cossett in front, winding up in second spot St Petersburg, Cossett in front with 100 to go from St Petersburg and Keffel down the grandstand, Cossett in front, St Petersburg lunging on the outside and got up. St Petersburg has beaten Cossett and down the grandstand side of the track, Keffel third. Then gifted ground, Kudamudu road to success. The bubble burst with Omaru Force, who was beaten at the 400. And then came uh, Kapias and Chenna at the tail end of the field. And uh, the time was 110.4. Here's Mark Aston. Well, the owners aren't here, but Peter Hayes is. Congratulations. Thank you, yes. I just want to check we won, didn't we? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. We 
think so. <laughs> we think so, Peter. <laughs> now, you, you, you tipped St Peter's Boot to us this morning, so you're obviously very confident. Uh, he's a very good colt, this. He's just had a few problems, but he's, uh, you can see he's very strong and very tough and very good colt. Good on you, mate. Pass our best on to the owners. That's Peter Hayes, the trainer of St Petersburg, the winner of race two here at Flemington, Pete. OK, Mark, thanks very much. There's the photo finish, and it is eight, four and five with St Petersburg just getting there in the last top from Cossett, Jenny Chapman's selection. And as we take a look at the interim dividends, Jen, it looked as though your horse had the money. I thought we were home, Peter, for sure, but uh, just nabbed on the line there by a good horse. Sheffield's run third, made up some ground in the last little bit too because I reckon when they came past us that Sheffield was probably a good two and a half, three lengths off the lead. Yes, uh, I'll be interested to see. I don't know if we can see the overhead, but uh, uh, the pattern of the racing there. And here we go. So let's have a look at this winner, St Petersburg, getting to Cosset, which had gone across to the uh, inside rail. Now, I don't know that there's a lot between the inside and the outside, but if you're going to make a decision now, you would say the inside rail. Well, yesterday, Peter, you and I walked out onto the straight here, yeah. and it did appear like four horses out was probably the better going. Now, it had a little bit of rain overnight, but uh, it looks to be the case here today. Omaru Force, well, he was beaten a long way out, wasn't he? Yes, he was quite disappointing. Whether or not he handled the going, I don't know. So there's Cosset in front in the pink colours. On the outside, St Petersburg getting to it very slowly under very hard riding from Stephen Baster. He rides them out hard with the whip when he has to, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Well, you've got to get to that finish line on time, don't you? And he did. And he's got there by probably about a head in the closing stages. So St Petersburg the winner, Cosset second, Sheffield third, eight, four and five. And you've seen the interim dividends. And the Strathfield race predictor has come up with the winner in race two. And it will be at uh, pretty good odds, as we saw, around about $10.80 on Super Tap. Look at him, the smiling jockey. He's always smiling, even if he runs last, he's smiling, yes, isn't he? Yes, he's a very happy jockey, and he's a very good jockey, too. He's just uh, come back from a suspension, where he missed the first week of the Caulfield Cup Carnival, but came back, and riding winner, Stevie Baster, aboard St Petersburg, the winner of the second event. It was the Shivers Regal. We'll be back with the white signal and the dividends from Flemington after this. the 2000 Melbourne Cup Carnival live around Australia on Network 10 and throughout many parts of the world. Hope you're enjoying the early stages of Amy Victoria Derby Day. The jockey's getting up on the scales and hopefully about to weigh in correctly after the running of the Group 3 Shivers Regal. The 19th running of this race and St Petersburg gives the high stable victory and the weight signal is there. Correct weight is there from Des Gleeson after the running of race two. So as we watch the horses striding to the line in this tight photo finish in the second event, Dan Maliki can tell us what the totes are. Winner at double figure odds, St. Petersburg, $10.80 and $2.70. Second four, Cosset, 140 Five, Keffel at 190 Quinella, $17.50. Exacta, $34.70. Trifecta, $244. The race to race double, if you've got the first two winners, $1,125.90 for the running double. Eight, four, and five on the second event. So, Tim, so far, a value with the first two winners, 100 to one on the tote, and then a 10 to one winner, St. Petersburg. Absolutely, Dan, and they left the money in the bag in that second. They certainly were jumping out of trees to back Cosset. They almost got there, but St. Petersburg upset a very big plunge in the second race. In the next, the Saab quality, Brew and Black Ledger are going to open up equal favourites, a tick under each way odds. And I can tell you that there's not a lot of betting on the derby at the moment, because most punters are awaiting the return the result of a swab from Scalado taken at 7 o'clock this morning. The results of that will be presented to the stewards, they tell me, at 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time today. So a lot of punters and bookmakers waiting on that swab, Peter. Yes, Tim, and uh, I just spoke to Des Gleeson before. I think we may uh, be aware of what's going on there, so we'll certainly bring you that news as soon as we do get it confirmed from uh, Mr Des Gleeson. Now, here are the totes on the Saab quality, the third, as they stand at the moment, on Super Tab Queensland and New South Wales, the wind tote, Brew at $5.20, Yammer at $4.80. They're the two on the front page. Rebor at $22 also has its supporters. Apache King, good run in the Geelong Cup, about 11 Black Ledger, my selection in the race has come up favourite at $4.50, but chances to Ears Ronnie, Liberty Hall, Mr Nelson as well. 
So we've got a big field here and a wide open race. It's uh, almost four to one the field, round about seven to two the favourite at the moment, and you've selected Brew, Jen. Yes, Peter, I thought his run last start was very good. He just probably got to the front there um, too early and just run over by UPIO in the Mooney Valley Cup, but it was a good effort. I thought number 10, Black Ledger, was most impressive last start, and Mr Nelson, I was giving a chance each way at good odds. All right, the predictors had a bit of success in race two, the Strathfield race predictors, so let's see what it's got to say for itself in the third, the Saab quality here. And they start over the 2,500 metre uh, start here, right in front of the grandstand. Spectacular start, Jen, but the jockeys have got to have their wits about them because they need to be in a position right about there. Yes, they sure do before they hit that first turn. Otherwise, you are covering a lot of ground, and if you're covering ground without any cover at all, uh, it makes it extremely hard to keep going and win. A lot of the Melbourne Cup horses involved in this race today, so they go up the riverside, and that's actually between about the 2,000 metre mark and the 1,400, so they have a long straight run there. Yes, they do. Um, normally a time where jockeys are probably trying to sort out uh, which horses are going well and which horses to tail and, uh, and see how your horse is going. Now, in the jockey's mind, Jen, as they get to the 1,200, they pass the old Chiquita Lodge. They don't want to go yet. They certainly don't want to be making their moves at that stage, but it's round about this particular point where they might be starting to urge their horses along and make the run at about the half mile, the 800. Yes, uh, well, you'll know round about the 800 whether or not your horse is travelling well at that stage or whether or not he's uh, at the end of his tether, but um, it's, it would be very, very exciting to be in that position with a horse fully under underneath you, that's for sure. And we saw in the first of the circle races that the horses up the front were the ones to beat. So as they get to the line, let's see what the Strathfield race predictor has come up with here for race number three on the card. And it's agreed with Jen and many of our experts, Brew to beat Black Ledger and Yammer, one ten and four the trifecta in race three, the Saab quality. Time now for the presentation after the running of the second. Let's introduce the commercial director of Shivers Brothers Asia Pacific, Mr. Peter Prentice. Well, thanks very much, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure to come down from Shivers Regal in Scotland to this magnificent race course and a big thank you to the VRC. Shivers Regal is about when you know and unfortunately got it all wrong today, didn't know it's going to be this great horse who won today. But I'd like to ask Mr Henry Plumtree please to come forward, accept uh, with our compliments and congratulations the trophy for the Shivers Regal plate today. Henry. Well done to the connections of St Petersburg, accepting the lovely trophy from the people from Shivers Regal, great supporters of racing here at Flemington. Now, Jen, um, just one point for people who work off a very well-known publication in racing, Best Bets, as we yes. look down from the Hertz blimp from uh, up above at this spectacular scene here at Flemington. But if you're working off Best Bets, an important point here. Yes, uh, there is a mistake in race three. Now, Best Bets is a fantastic publication. The guys who do the form in, these, in this race, uh, I mean, for all the races around Australia, is fantastic. Yep. Um, but there is a mistake in race three, so refer to your newspaper form guides for that race. Yeah, just uh, double check the numbers. That's the, yeah. uh, the best way to go. All right, the next race is race number three, the Saab quality. So, so uh, for your Melbourne Cup fancies, you better keep an eye out here. And that is due at 12.40, and that is round about 25 minutes away from now here at Flemington. He's the dog's <laughs> As you can see some of the glamour and action, the horses warming up, images of what is a wonderful sport. They don't call it the sport of kings for nothing. Very majestic and quite magical. For someone who is a novice in terms of the equine industry, trying to learn to ride myself, I get so impressed and so enamoured when I see those beautiful, beautiful creatures. Well, you know, as I said earlier in the day, if you can't be a part of the action, we do want to hear from you. You get a chance to perhaps drop us some comments, you may, may have some questions, and you're just a little bit curious about aspects of the telecast, perhaps aspects of horse racing itself. We'd love to hear from you, so make sure you drop us a line. Our email address here, our official Melbourne Cup email address, is thecup at network10.com.au. As I said, we would love to hear from you. Well, throughout this week, uh, Melbourne Cup Carnival is a tremendous platform and showcase for Australian fashion. To the first of our fashion features, and it, to someone who has quite a unique take on racewear, Melbourne designer Jackie Fernandez.
Well, as a textile designer, I design fabrics and slowly fashion for a few fashion and textile companies. I freelanced and I worked in-house and through my employment, I knew that I was taking a part towards having my own label eventually. I think mine is a very comfortable style, but my fabrics are what create my style. My styles are fluid, simple, there's an edge to them. They're not classical as in boring, but they may be classical with a twist or an edge. The outfit is made of silk and wool. The coat can be taken off and there's a sleeveless dress underneath in case it's very hot. The coat's very enveloping if it's cold. And I've chosen a style that, again, is classic, with a real edge to it, but something that's fluid and a print that's just beautiful. The, the, the fire print is just very warm. I prefer a flower or hair just left free. I like the clothes to speak for themselves. Jackie Fernandez there with an extraordinary creation. And you know, there's some wonderful fashion that we're going to feature this week, which all leads to our wonderful, fantastic fashion competition. As you can see, all you need to do is simply call the number that you're about to see on your screen, select the outfit each day that you like. Now, you'll be given a choice of three. You simply need to pick the one you like, ring the number on your screen, tell us which one you like and why. Now, the prize is daily prizes, and they are terrific, courtesy of Qantas Domain, Chandon and L'Oreal. It's a weekend for two to Melbourne. A wonderful weekend domain Chandon experience at the Yarra Valley, spending money and a gift pack thanks to L'Oreal. So keep watching and uh, keep a keen eye on fashion as all uh, racing lovers do. So uh, the number's about to come up. You're about to see it on your screen. 1902 555 961 from memory. No, 966. Gee, my memory's failing me so early. I hate to think I'm going to fare for the rest of the week, but there you go, 1902-555-966 and your chance to win some great prizes. We'll stick around the countdown to the derby. Continues 2.45 this afternoon, race six on the card. The most prestigious day in Australian racing. Stay with us, we'll be back with more. took the lead together. The Warrior getting through on the inside, Sheer Kingston running a race. It's Arcady Rose of War, the Warrior pushing through Sheer Kingston, then Seaspell, Arcady Rose of War and the Warrior, Rose of War and the Warrior on the rails, the Warrior and Rose of War, they're going to hit it locked together, bob of the head here, bob of the head, nothing between them. Now John, today you'll blood test every horse in the derby. Yes, all starters. And why are we doing that? Well, basically, it's a pre-race blood test for drug analysis, and yeah. essentially it's to just screen these horses to make sure they haven't been given anything prior to racing. Now, you have a very busy day. It's not just the derby you're focusing on. There'll be uh, other horses that get the blood test too. We do between five and seven horses in every race. Uh, and as you say, we do all the horses in the major races, so that'll be the same over the whole carnival. Now, there's a nasty job to be done after a race yeah. too, and you're the man for that. Now, what is it? I am, Tim. Uh, <laughs> well, it's not so nasty. It's a relatively easy one. We post-race a uh, urine sample, or collect urine from uh, uh, every winner. So that'll be nine horses today, and we do first, second and third in the major races. All right, well, best of luck with it, mate. Thanks, Tim. Have a good day. It's right. an important part of the day's racing. Thanks right. for showing us behind the scenes. Thanks for Tim. Right on. Okay. He can Cheers. have that job all to himself, that urine bit. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. It is an important part, you know, of the whole carnival. We are getting some emails, and it's great to hear from you, but one constant question that keeps popping up is you'd like some detail about this beautiful flower I'm wearing. Well, it is the traditional flower.